long road is made. Did you, did you see all this stretching? And for an adult, it's so difficult. You run out of your breath. But for the child, that is what he wants. That's what he wants to do at home. Climb a bed, go here, run downstairs. But he does not get the opportunity. Once here, bringing it, it was ten times. And going back another ten times. And now when he's going to put it back, it's another ten times. And then folding the mat, rolling the mat and all the action. So this can only be for the child, not for the adult. <laughs> okay. Um, one day you come in the classroom and you see the child that he is uh, working and he's made this. Then you give him another exercise. Auntie is going to, you made this? Did you make this? Okay. Auntie is going to show you something very interesting. Let's check something. all the same. You don't give the child any explanation as such but here we are making him realize that these rods are increasing <coughs> by the hair indirectly he is working towards maths. Who can tell me what it is? Right? Here we put one so whatever the length of this plus this length becomes equal to this lump. These are all addition. And once you are minusing it, like these are equal, when you take away this, it becomes one rod shorter. Those are all indirect preparation for math. The child works, but I'm not going to ask you to do it because it's going to take lots of long time. Would you like to work with it? Society, you must turn to childhood. We should have more Montessori schools, more... It doesn't have to be Montessori schools, honestly. Even if your school is a mixed curriculum or if your school is following any other curriculum, I would say one of the most effective ways to take forward this message is to educate the parents. Keep talking to the parents. Hold workshops. Help then uh, talk to them if they come to you and tell, Miss, my son doesn't is not reading well. He can do only two digit addition. I get queries like that. He can do only two digit addition. I'm like, relax. We didn't even do that when we were that young. So, so the best way to go forward is not only as educators. Make sure you convey the same thing to them. Parents. They are the most important link in the childhood. Okay? So man, unlike the animals, is not born with movements already coordinated. He has to shape it, coordinate his own movements, nor has he even a predetermined aim. This too he must find for himself. The example of the kitten? Yeah? The kitten is born and that's it. The calf or any any animal within within few few moments they start to be independent. Are we like that? It's a very laborious task. It's a very difficult task the absorbent mind is doing to be able to construct your move, to be make sure that you walk on your two legs, to you use your hands for holding. It's not an easy task. Now it looks so easy to us because you have so many other things in your mind. But imagine a newborn baby who doesn't know anything, who doesn't know anything, comes into this world, then tries to coordinate its movements. So it is that important. Um. 
Psycho this is what I was talking about, remember? The every individual has different powers. It is not can you tell when the child is born that he is going to be a pianist, he is going to be a spiritual leader or a teacher or something? No. So that individual powers are not visible in the psychoembryonic stage. You need the help. The children need help to unfold. Now, when the proper help is not given, I'm not saying we wouldn't grow up to be uh, bad people or something, but we would take our time to find the passion. Classic example is my own story. I did engineering. I don't know why I did engineering. Then I did masters in engineering. Also don't know why. Finally, now I'm a Montessori. You, you see what I mean? It takes its time. It's not that we wouldn't do it. But you need to put in 10 times the effort, the time, and the energy to actually work out what you need. It doesn't mean that my parents raised me poorly. Uh, take away this message with you, especially about the absorbent mind. Try to share it with the parents so that they respect the child, you know, because most of the times we hear complaints like, okay, my son doesn't do this, my daughter doesn't do that. It's very trivial, but they have to understand that it's trivial and that the child is doing much more important tasks than just doing addition or reading or writing. Every child eventually learns to read or write. That's my favorite quote, own quote, self quote. I tell everyone, every child eventually learns to read or write. That doesn't matter, okay? Educate them about the philosophy, about the child, the importance of the child. Okay? Education should follow the natural unfolding of man, which is what a uh, Montessori system does. All of you know it already. So how must the education be? What sort of things do you want to bring into the education system? Now you know about the absorbent mind. You know about the power of the absorbent mind. Without looking at it. You can click pictures, but don't read. <laughs> Tell me what, what sort of things should, how you think the education system should be. Interactive, okay. Yeah, active participation, I think, yes. Children, freedom, okay. Prepared environment, yes. Sorry? Prioritize the child's, yes, individuality, yes. Okay, you have all the points over there, see? That's why I told you not to read it. So you base it on the laws of natural development, okay. We have the laws of natural development, law of working, independence, that covers all the points that you guys mentioned, satisfy the needs of life. Child indicates through spontaneous manifestation the point that you made. Prioritize the child. Prioritize what the child wants. Child's happiness, tranquility, intensity of e efforts and chosen responses. Okay. This, will, this is an indicator of whether your, your activities are appropriate or not. If you see the child is happy, means that you have designed a very good activity for your child. You understand? These are indicators. Tranquility, intensity of efforts. You see a child working on a particular material over and over and over again. Okay. You have you have uh, chosen the right material to present to the child. And the responses. So, how is this possible? You can achieve this only by learning from the child himself or herself. If you don't observe the child, how will you know what the child wants? You have to learn from the child and then serve her, her or him, okay? So, that's how the education should be. Now, what happens when, we have been talking about unconscious creator. What happens when they become a conscious worker from 3 to 6? What happens? Most of you have experience working with children of 3 to 6. Tell me what happens 3 to 6. There's nothing there if you read, not much. But yeah, what happens at 3? From 3 to 6, rather. They start to ask many questions. Yes. Yes. Okay. Reason comes a little bit later, probably around 4 and a half, 5. But they do. Yes, it does. Nowadays, it's coming a bit earlier. Before that, they consciously choose to work with something. Until two and a half or something, they were not consciously choosing anything, right? They are just absorbing. At two and a half, they consciously choose activities. So in the Maria Montessori's primary classroom, pre-primary classroom, excuse me, two and a half to six year olds, that's why we have a uh, option to choose your own activities. They consciously choose activities. So the activities the child chooses will, is an indicator for you to show that um, uh, what sort of a development or what sort of a sensitive period the child is in. 
that will show you. Okay, this particular child is right now interested in developing the pencil grip. So you can see the child is going to the practical life activities, more practical life activities. Or the child is uh, probably going more to sensorial, okay. The child needs, uh, is in the sensitive period for that. So that's why the Montessori classroom was designed with an option of free choice and uh, choice of activity. So before three, functions are being created. Now, till now, everything is created. They can talk, they can walk, they can fairly eat by themselves a little bit, okay? Everything is created. What will happen now? They will develop this. They will perfect it. Till now, if the child is walking with slight, you know, uh, yeah, uh, not perfectly, now the, from three to six, the child will aim to do and redo and redo the things till the child is very, can walk, can run, can jump off, uh, off the equipment in the playground. You see how the perfection happens, okay? So they are developing it. The river of forgetfulness separates these two So this river leap in the Greek mythology. So there is a river that goes underground in, in Greece and people who drink the water from the river forget everything. Okay. Who drink the water from the river go into oblivion and they forget whatever has happened. So that's what happens at three years old. They don't remember what has happened before zero to three. So that's, they call it the river of forgetfulness. So the river of forgetfulness separates the two periods from zero to three and three to six. At three, they don't know. They have worked so hard to construct everything in their life. And uh, the unconscious creator becomes the forgotten being. So we forget everything. We forget all the hard work the unconscious creator has done. Now we are looking at a new man at three. And we start praising, oh, my son can identify all colors. My son can do numbers. My son can read. My daughter can write. What happens from zero to three is gone. Yes. Do you remember anything that's happened to you from zero to three? Most often, no. Unless you have a very sharp memory, yeah, maybe around three you can, but zero to two, most likely no. Very sad. That becomes a forgotten. It's like history. The work is done. Now, from three, it starts again. At three, we have a person impossible to understand. So they have new, new needs. So in the first period, child is entirely dependent. We try not to hinder the child's progress. Now, there are two conflicting thoughts here. One, zero, the child is entirely dependent on you. Okay. At the same time, you cannot influence the child. You understand your position as an adult when you're dealing with the child from zero to three in planning your activities and just by just talking to the child. Okay. From three, the child tackles the environment, like I said. He develops his creation until then. He is still absorbing. Remember, he's still in the absorbent mind, okay? But now he's absorbing from there, from his own experiences. He chooses his experiences to absorb from. That's the difference from unconscious to conscious, okay? So unconscious, like I said, as much as it sounds very powerful, you have to be very, very careful. It can cause equal harm. So you have to be careful. Okay. What happens in a country where it's filled with toys? with toys. Do you think toys are necessary? Yes? All of, yes, you see so many colorful toys, trucks and cars and Legos and I don't know, there are so many things. Exactly. They are going to experience less of life. You know the best way for a child to learn <coughs> is to learn with the mother. Be with the mother, help the mother in the daily, daily activities go with the mother. Wherever the mother is going, the child has to go. Especially the unconscious period. You know, the more you're going to stimulate them with toys and external stimulation, they are going to depend on that heavily and that's going to have other repercussions which I discussed in my other talk. That's a whole topic by itself. I'm not going there, but it's not a healthy sign. You know, so uh, there's a reason why I always tell the parents try to minimize the toys that you buy for the children, but it doesn't happen here in Indonesia. At least in Jakarta, I've tried, it doesn't happen. But I still keep trying. So you should also try. You should always tell that doesn't matter. So my professor tells me, even if there is one person after this talk, if there is one of you who's going out from this room and telling me, no, I'm going to take this observant mind very seriously and I'm going to practice it, I'll be very happy. That's enough. That's more than enough for me. It's the same thing. If one parent can listen to you and change the lifestyle, the way they live, 
that's a very big impact that you've already created. So never give up. Don't say that, oh, my parents are never listen to me. It doesn't matter. There will be that one parent who will be there. I have seen it. I have seen parents change. So keep educating them. So the teacher's role, you are a custodian of the environment. Take good care of your environment. Prepare delightful activities. Then follow the child. In the beginning, uh, especially for 0 to 3, you might have to do more group activities like um, music and movement and... Um, and rhymes, yeah, singing and dancing, and because you you don't know their interests yet, right? They are still absorbing the the experiences from the environment. <coughs> Once they are past that stage, you can follow this child. From three to six, you will be able to follow the child and able to design activities. Transformation of this teacher. First, you have we have to transform ourselves. It's a top again. It's a topic by itself. You can talk for hours together on teacher teacher preparation of our spirit but the basic thing is you have to be touched by the love and the inner spirit of the child the child should be your motivation I know definitely we have other motivations too in becoming a teacher we have our own passion we want to do ambitious things it's not wrong I'm not saying that is wrong you should do only this but when you are out there in the classroom with the children the only motivation is the love and the spirit of the child so when you look at child from this angle of what we discussed today about the absorbent mind the way you talk to the child will change the way you approach the child will change and uh, your expectations also will change because what happens when parents keep talking to us about you know reading and writing and uh, mathematics we also get sucked into that vortex you know we also tend to think we try to push the child okay come on you have to do addition I have to fill your report card okay it's very easy to get into that domain it's really very easy. I have fallen into it many times, but every time I follow it, I make a sincere attempt to come out of it. I make a sincere attempt to come out of it. So, the one thing that you as teachers or educators can do is to think about what you did. Retrospect. Okay, I think I've crossed the line over here. Let me take a step back and go easy with the child. You know, 